All right, internet, what is going on? So we are on Natas 27, and um, this one wasn't too bad. Uh, obviously, I couldn't figure it out myself, like, like usual, but uh, it wasn't too complicated to understand. There weren't too many steps, which is kind of nice uh, in comparison to 26 and 25. So with uh, Natas 27, um, what I'll do is I'll walk you through right now, I'll walk you through kind of what we're doing, and then I'll talk through the problem and stuff. But in a nutshell, the type of attack we're doing here is a database trunc truncation attack in the sense that uh, a database has a set limit. So let me try to draw this out. So when you have a SQL database, at least one of the outdated ones that we're hacking here, uh, you have a table, right? And on that table, we have columns. So we say we have two columns here. We have a user column and a password column. So in this column, there's a set series of spaces that are allowed in here, depending on the type of mode the database is in, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but let's just say that this database here has a 64 uh, character limit on the width that it can have. So the width here, as wide as it can go, is 64 characters. So what we're going to do in this attack is basically we're going to supersede that 64 character length um, with a series of spaces. So we're going to have our username, we're going to have a bunch of spaces, and then we're going to have some gobbledygook at the end. So it could be anything. So let's just say, I don't know, uh, apples. Right, so that'll be apples at the, at the end, and then we have our username in the front. So when we put this in here, it's going to be truncated. So once we exceed 64 characters, so let's say that 64 characters um, sits right about here. So we're going to truncate apples out, and we're going to just have this username with a bunch of spaces that are truncated, and you're just going to have the U username in here. But if you have another username in here that has a U, such as this, so we have U1, and then we actually have our U2, but that is interpreted as U1, because we've truncated, remember, the last piece here, so we just have U1 with a series of spaces. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to basically do this type of attack, um, manipulate the truncation that's being put in the, the table itself, and we're actually going to get the password for the original uh, Natas 28, which is what we're going for, um, but we're going to have our Natas 28 with a series of spaces, and they're going to assume that we're this one, but we're actually going to get this one here. And that will make us happy, little people. So um, that's kind of what we're going to do here. Now I'm going to walk you through some of the solutions that I've seen that I thought were quite useful. And after I've walked through those, um, then we can jump to the code. So some of the solutions that I came across is this first one here, which is um, NOJ once again. So NOJ did a good job at explaining uh, most of this. I thought it was quite useful. Um, the one thing I really appreciated is they actually explained the truncation really well um, through some just text, some basic test, text. And I'll show you what this looks like here. So that was a good one. Um, another one that I actually really appreciated was the security times this time. And the reason being is that they actually walked you through a series of functions in the code that are also um, vulnerable. So that wasn't really touched on with uh, N0J, N N um, but they touched on some of the additional vulnerabilities in association to the truncation database. Um, once again, we have Chris Dale and John Hammond. So Chris Dale does a good job, again, at actually walking through the discovery process. So the first half of his video, so he's got a 26-minute video, I would say the first 15 minutes or so is just him toying around with the application, trying to figure out what the issue is without looking at the code. And that's really the proper way of pen testing, or at least when you're not you know, having access to the source code. Um, so I thought that was actually really insightful just to see him go through that process and the thought process that he has. Um, he's definitely a Zap uh, fan. He uses, not Zap, I mean Burp. He used Burp a lot. So that was interesting there. And then John Hammond um, walks you through as well. His was quite insightful. He did a good job at explaining it. Um, so those are all the different solutions I looked at and I kind of read through and understood before explaining it to you. Um, so I'm going to close these out, except for this one. Um, and then another thing I wanted to point out before I jump into the actual problem here is I actually went down two separate rabbit holes, uh, completely uh, irrelevant of the actual answer. Um, there could have been a possibility there, but I'm not sure if there was. But there were two functions in there. Um, this specific one, which I'll explain, is a, it's a MySQL real escape string, so it's a way for them to escape. It's, they're sanitizing your input as a user. And I thought that there was a, a vulnerability here because you can see there's a warning here saying that it's been deprecated. And then if you read further about this and kind of Google um, vulnerabilities in this, you'll see that there is some vulnerabilities towards it, but that's not the answer. And then another one is um, HTML entities, which is another way of actually converting, you can see characters to HTML entities. And that's another form of sanitization in PHP. And when reading through this, um, I actually found some security flaws specifically here. So there's a mention of one of the flags having a security flaw. So I thought that was it, um, but that wasn't it either. So basically saying that I spent probably an hour or so going down the wrong wrong road, um, then cheated, but still learned about some other vulnerabilities. 
And it's okay to go down the wrong path sometimes. You'll always find your way back. Oh, yeah. So um, let's play around with this app to show you what it does. So we have username and password. So if we put in A, and I thought this was interesting, actually. So um, I'm going to point this out just because I thought it was fascinating. Uh, on Firefox, I don't know if Chrome or others do this, but there's basically the box that just dis disappeared here. So when you type in something, it prompts you saying, hey, there's, there's, uh, there's some baddie stuff here. And the reason being is that this is, uh, there's no security. There's no um, TLS or SSL or whatever. Um, and you can see that basically saying you're putting your password and username in clear text. So don't do it, which I thought was a really cool security feature. So good on them for doing that. So anywho, we're not going to listen to that because we don't care about security. So we're going to put A in here. And for some reason, I put a bunch of spaces around it, which is crazy. It's weird. Let's, let's just do A. All right, so we'll do A's username, A is password. We put that in and it says user A was created. So it's going to create a user if the user is not in the database. So if let's do A, A again, and then it's going to say, oh, welcome. You know, we here's your data. And you can see this is part of the sanitization process. They're returning an array in here. So they're saying, if you're a user, you've just created yourself, we're going to give you that back. So now we're going to do this again, but we're going to do it without an A. We'll do it with a Q. And it says, okay, wrong password uh, for this user. So from this, we know it does a few things, right? So we know the app um, can uh, create. So it'll create a user. It will um, check to see if the user is valid. If the user is valid and the password is valid, uh, then what it'll do is it'll return everything you want. And then if you put in the wrong password, then it basically uh, blocks you and says, you're lame, sad face. And with that being said, uh, I'm going to jump into the source code and walk you through some of the stuff that I've seen in here and um, explain more about the solution. So when we jump into the source code, I'm going to do it in Sublime because it's easier here and you can see it better. So we're going to change the coloring here. All right. So. Uh, interesting thing, it says the database is cleared every five minutes, which was an interesting little bit there. Um, but as usual, we're going to ignore the header and we're going to jump down here. So first things first, you can see here is that this is stating that this, uh, this table, as I mentioned previously, has a 64 uh, character limit for the width. And this is varchar, which is going to be important. Um, this is an important piece. So remember the varchar. So we can see that. And if we go a bit further, um, we can read through this. And I thought one, one way that somebody explained this in a blog was quite interesting, where they actually just took out all the functionality and all these and explained them as they were uh, without the con convoluted logic before it. So just look at the names, and it's, it's quite useful. So first things first is we're just going to check the credentials uh, that you put in. So we're going to check the user and the password. And if that's correct, then we'll return what you want. Um, and you can see the logic here basically selecting uh, a user from a user uh, table. And if it's correct, then return true. If it's not, return false. Um, next thing is you can see that it's checking for valid user. Here it's checking to see if, uh, so this is the credential, so your password, this is the username and the table period. Uh, this is basically dumping your data if it's accurate. So that's the array piece that you saw where it basically dumped out the array. This is going to be important. I'll come back to this in a second. There's a create user function, which we talked about, which creates your user. Um, and then there is a large uh, condition here, basically, that's doing a series of things, um, which is all the stuff you've seen above. So we're checking to see if it's a valid user. We're calling that function. We're checking the credentials. Uh, once we've checked that, if everything checks out, we're going to dump the data. And then if not, we're going to tell you it's the wrong password. And then also, if that's not true, then we'll create a user. So this large conditional statement is basically stringing all of these functions together to do all the functionality we just seen. So with that being said, um, like, I, like I said last time, I actually uh, kind of went on a little rat race on this specific one. So I got a little lost here and I started uh, running down and trying to research if there was any issues in this, um, but there weren't, at least not for this one. Um, and then keep looking through here. You can see uh, that was an issue for me. Anyways. Um, dump data. So this is really the key here. Reason being is if we look at this, um, basically what it's stating is that if you have the right username and that username is in the table, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, if this is true, and if there's more than one username in the table, I want you to run a while loop and print out all the information. So they mentioned, thanks for reporting the bug. We fixed this. Um, they think they fixed this. But this function here actually is um, an interesting one and I'll show you a table of uh, research that I found. But basically what this is doing is it's going to find the first username 
um, on the table and then it's going to dump that back out. And I found this uh, page, not here, uh, this one here, where it basically mentions that this is kind of what it's going to do. So if I just do first to save us some time. Um, here you can say that the only solution to this, uh, to reset the pointer blah, 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 um, to, to the first row again before the second code segment. So you can see that it's printing out the first row piece. So that was one interesting bit, is that this function specifically uh, pulls out the first row. Now the next thing I want to point out is uh, the table piece. So we know this is printing out the first row, so that's good. Um, and then the next one is this table here. So uh, another uh, interesting article that I came across that actually really talks through a lot of what's needed to understand how to, how to do this, at least in an interesting way, is um, so the varchar versus car, so I'll talk about that, and then the database. So, um, the database models, there's different types of data made database models. Um, the one that we're actually not using today is strict mode. So strict mode would actually prevent us from doing this attack, but I think they defaulted to whatever is provided. And that SQL mode for the database itself is allowing you to actually have a truncated, um, a truncated username without getting any errors. So you're just getting warnings in the back end. And to explain that um, more, uh, I guess, candid leader specifically let me go to this change the coloring so ignore all this text for a second um and uh, i'll help you i'll help you ignore it there we go so what i was mentioning is the truncation piece so if we have strict mode so s and then we have just say default mode so the strict mode would basically say that if you're gonna if you have your database right and you have your width if you're going to supersede the width we're going to actually provide an error to the user and we're not, allow, we're not going to allow them, so we're going to block them, basically. But if you have it as default mode, and you still have your width of how much you can put in there, um, it's going to give you a warning, but that warning is actually going to go to the back end. So we're going to be in the back end telling the developer that this has happened, but we're still going to truncate it. So we got our T for truncate, and we're just going to truncate it off, and we're going to still add it to there as a username. And that's one important thing to remember. Another important thing to see here is actually when you look at the code snippet here or in Sublime here, you can see that um, the table has var char instead of char, um, char itself. So character, so variable characters or character. And variable character, I think it's just numbers and letters. And with that being said, if you come in here, you can actually see, let me, uh, oh, no, I don't want that. Unless you control find. Is that, what is that? What is happening right now? Internet. Here we go. Trunk. Okay. I wanted to find a specific sentence in here, which is this sentence here and this explanation here. So this sentence here is basically saying that for columns that have the uh, varchar setting itself, um, what's going to happen is all the trailing spaces in excess of the column length, which is 64 for us, um, they're going to be truncated prior to the insertion. And then a warning is going to be generated. So like that, like I said, the warning is going to be sent to the, the development team. The insertion is still going to occur, and we're going to truncate what we need. And here down here, they're showing uh, an example. So this is the char example, and this is the var char, which is what we have. And here they've set the limit as 4 instead of 64. So here we, they put the value in a space. And then what's being input for the var table is actually um, four character spaces, because that's the length. So they're always going to fill the space. But in the, the varchar length, they're not going to fill a space, so they're just putting in one. So if you put in one, it only gives you one. Another way of actually seeing this that actually is more reasonable is if you put in AB, they're going to put AB four spaces because they want to still fill the four bytes. But here, if you put AB, it's just going to put AB and it's going to um, only put in um, uh, three. So we're truncating out the space here. So there's still a space here that's not being uh, noticed. So that's the difference between the var, char, and char, and that's another important thing to remember and know inside of what's happening here. This is one of the tutorials I showed you that kind of shows you, I talked about through the example that was actually quite useful. Um, you can see that basically they've input a series of U's, uh, five spaces, etc. Um, so that's good. Now, the other last thing I wanted to say is that with this specifically, um, one thing I tried doing when actually trying to Get, avoid the truncation is putting in your Natas here, putting a series of spaces, say we've exceeded 64, but you've not put anything here. Uh, the reason you need to do that is because if you just put spaces without the username, it's only it's going to truncate everything. It's going to just assume that it's the username originally in Natas 28 that we put in. 
But if we put something back here, so let's put something here, we have a different username now. So we have Natas28, a ton, a ton of spaces, and then something. So this in total is a separate username. Then if this wasn't here, it would have just been the Natas28. Um, so that was a mess up that I made, but you know I figured it out over time. So now that I've talked a ridiculous long time, and I'm, I'm going to show you, you know, how this is done. So we're gonna go to Zap, and I'm going to clear out everything, because this is too much, maybe not. Uh, Control A, delete, sure. All right, um, cool. So we're set up here, and we have our setup here in the browser. So I guess we'll just do this. Uh, we'll do Natas28. Uh, and then we'll put some spaces, we won't put all of them yet. And then we'll go to tab and then we'll just have the password as A. We'll say login. It's gonna say that this password is wrong for the user. But if we come back to Zap and we actually look at what we posted, you can see that um, this is the post. We have spaces uh, are substituted for pluses and then we have um, nothing at the end. So I'm gonna, res I'm gonna resend this back to the browser. And I'm going to basically copy and paste this in a ton of times. So we exceed 64, so that's definitely past 64. And then I'm gonna put A at the end, um, just so we know that this entirety of this is a separate username than the other. So if we send this, it's gonna say that it's created the username. And now what we can do is if that's the case, I can then come back here. And once I'm back here, I should be able to go back, type in the toss 28, Tab A, enter, and that's the wrong one. Internet. What did I do wrong here? So let's do the toss 28, some spaces, and then A. Okay, so I think I know what I'm doing wrong. Don't do what I'm doing, Internet. So we sent that, and that was confirmed. That's fine. So let's close this out, and let's look at Zap, and let's see the last post. So we had a get, we had a post. That's not what we want. Uh, so. I, We've, we've did the post and it's set up in the browser. So I think if we refresh, this is, did it, did it get the git? Did it get my git? So I got my git. I got my gits. So now if I put in the toss 28 in the browser, come on now, work with me. And then put in an A, it gives us the password back because we posted it to the username Listen, I know what I'm doing, Internet. I just got a struggle a little bit sometimes. So we put in our first user. So we have our table here. Put in our first Natas28. That's the, this is the answer, right? It's the right one. We put in ours. So we posted it. And then we had our password of A. And then we had all of our spaces that were truncated. Um, we, so we posted here, right? For some reason, I don't know how to do a git inside of Zap. So screw that. So I just came back to the browser. And I did a git, uh, kind of, kind of git slash post to see if in that table they could find my original username that was truncated Natas28 and then that gave us back the original password which is here. So, you know, I thought it was, you know, easy but I guess everything's not so easy. Internet, I'll see you on number 28.